So there's a, a, really, cool, a really cool application for, for our relativistic energy, the E equals m naught c squared, um, or the rest energy, I should say. And it comes in, the, basically, the story of how we understood how the sun makes its energy. And I'm going to give you the full, like, unvarnished truth here. Um, this is actually the recipient of two separate Nobel Prizes. So it's, like, it's a big deal. And um, the original authors of the, of the groundbreaking paper were um, Hans Bethe and George Gamow. And um, they, so they, they developed this theory. This was in the 1940s, I believe. And basically the theory of how, how specifically, what chain of reactions occur inside the sun to produce energy. And it, it's fascinating. So, and, but my, my favorite part of this, though, is that beta and uh, B-A-T-H-E is how, how it's written, and Gamow, G-A-M-O-W. So Hans Beta and George Gamow were ready to publish their, their absolutely seminal paper, um, one of the most groundbreaking ones, I think, in the history of astronomy. And they realized, hey, wouldn't it be fun if between, um, if between my, me, Beta, and you, Gamow, if we got our friend Ralph Alpher, which is also just a hilarious name itself, but Ralph Alpher, A-L-P-H-E-R, to go in with us, and so this paper became known as the Alpha Beta Gamma paper, or the ABC paper. So they literally just had their friend sign on for Alpha, just to get the, the first three letters of the Greek alphabet, Alpha, Beta, and Gamma. Um, and so still to this day, um, I don't think Alpha was involved in the Nobel of it. Um, beta received his. So, um, We'll get into that in a moment. But the, the most important thing is that the way that the sun produces its energy, they realize, is that un, through the process of nuclear fusion, which we knew generically, or we had very good hints generically what was happening now. Uh, remember, this was, you know, at about the time of the atomic bomb. And, and, and I'm going to, I think it was actually 1930s when the development of this occurred. Um, I should check that, but I want to say like 36 or so. Um, so anyway, though, we, what we realized was that there is, the sun is mostly hydrogen, with a small portion of helium, about 90, 10 or so. And over time, that hydrogen has a tendency to merge with other hydrogens, which we now understand as, you know, nuclear fusion. And so the hydrogens fused into helium plus energy. Uh, let me rewrite that. So this is the general equation where how nuclear fusion occurs. Hydrogen fuses into, and that's, that's what I mean there, fuses into helium plus energy. So this is the basic. To be a little bit more precise, we now understand that it's in fact, it takes four hydrogen nuclei to produce one helium. And we'll, we'll delve into that just a tad more here in a moment. But more importantly, this is the, the so, so once we understand and once we at least accept blindly that this is the chain reaction, um, what we can now do is measure, and by the way, one thing you might be questioning, and, and this is worth actually drawing out here. Um, each of these hydrogen before fusion. So I'm going to take four hydrogen. We just have a little plus. It's a proton. So by the way, inside the sun, we have a plasma. This is important to note. So we no longer have atoms. Don't think of hydrogen as a proton and electron. Those electrons, once you, once you, um, uh, once you heat... <laughs> That make something hotter. Once, once you heat something up to millions of Kelvin, which we're at, those electrons begin moving so quickly that they completely escape their energy orbits, the, their orbital levels, and so you just have literally a sea of electrons and a sea of protons um, or other nuclei, whatever the electrons used to shield, are now free to roam about. So we are not going to worry about electrons whatsoever for the rest of this because they're, on, they're, they're off doing their own thing. They'll, they'll enter back into the pun, back into the fun, back into the party at the very end of it. So, with that said, this is what, you, what, what used to be a hydrogen nucleus. It's a single proton. There's another single proton over here. There's another single proton. Actually, let me write it like this. Proton, 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 proton. 
So we have four individual uh, hydrogen nuclei, just raw protons. If they all combine here, they go bang. Now, you get out other byproducts of this, which we can go through momentarily. But the most important thing that we get out is, well, energy, of course. And we'll talk about what form that energy is in here in a moment. But what I mean by that, we get two energies <laughs> and we get out a helium nucleus. And specifically that helium nucleus, we're going to call it helium-4. And helium-4 consists of two protons, which it has to to be helium and two neutrons. Make sense? It's the most stable nucleus of helium. And this is the exact diagrammetrical, I think that's a word, view of this equation. We put in those four guys, they're each hydrogen, and we get out a helium-4 nucleus and two packets of energy. As we'll learn, these come out, they're, they're emitted in the form of gamma ray photons, but just think of it generically as energy for now. The other thing that should bother you is that we turn four positive charges into two positive charges. Um, the, the charge, in fact, is balanced by other particles that we'll talk about here in a moment, too. But just don't, don't focus on that because it does balance out. Um, if you're really astute, you'll notice the momentum is not balanced. If you are named Paul Adrian Maurice Dirac. Um, we'll come back to that. Was it Dirac or was it? Yeah, yeah, it was Dirac. Um, okay, so that's what it looks like. But here's the strange thing. Let's take a scale and let's measure the mass of the products and the reactants. So we take a scale here and we weigh the individual four charges that we started from. So the hydrogen, generically, we weigh those four things together and we compare it to a scale that has that helium and turns out it does not balance. That scale, the hydrogen there, so that hydrogen is heavier than the helium. And this should be weird. You put in so, so think of it like this. You take four people, four average human beings. Let's say each person weighs, just for sake of ease, 150 pounds. Take four human beings that are outside. You weigh each individual human being outside. Their combined weight is 600 pounds. You let them walk through the door to your house. You weigh them inside your house. Um, no, no, actually, let's, let's not say it. Uh, you, you weigh them outside separately. They, they, they each entirely separately weigh 600 pounds. You, had, you tell them to make a big group hug, and you weigh them then. If you weigh them while they're group hugging, what the equivalent here is that if they previously weighed 600 pounds combined, when they group hug, you would expect them to still be 600 pounds, but if this holds up, it, when that occurs, instead they might only weigh 580 pounds. So something weird is going on, that the act of hugging each other causes them to lose mass. And in this case here, the act of those four individual uh, hydrogen nuclei fusing together into one nucleus also results in it losing some mass. So, turns out that the, what you heard in you know, elementary, middle school, that um, mass is always conserved. That is complete and utter bullshit. It is just simply wrong that mass is not conserved. And, and fundamentally, it can't be conserved if you want to have a star. You absolutely have to destroy mass to, to output energy. And that's exactly what happens inside the sun. Every second, the sun transforms 600 million tons, not one right, Tony, 600 megatons of hydrogen, metric tons, by the way, into a smaller amount of helium, 596 megatons of helium. That missing four million tons is exactly where the energy of the sun comes from. It's literally destroying itself to give us light. 
Isn't that kind of cool? So if you do the exact calculation, you can find out exactly how much mass the sun is destroying if you know its energy output. And so that, that's, in fact, what I want to do here. What we, now, what we now have a very good value of exactly how much energy the sun outputs over time. And, you know, we average it, of course. It does go through slightly more and less active phases. But if you can measure the energy, you can work backwards to find these numbers here. And that's actually what I want to do. I want to do a quick example of taking the sun's overall uh, luminosity. We call it the bo uh, bolometric luminosity. The, the luminosity combined over all wavelengths of light that it outputs. And we have in indeed measured that. So once you measure that, then you can work backwards to figure out how much hydrogen must it be destroying every second. How much mass is it losing per second? And how long, in theory, would it have to live if it keeps uh, uh, destroying its mass like that? So give me one second to get some erasing and just do the, put the numbers in here. So if we actually want to plug in some numbers here, our sun's overall luminosity, we write it like this, L sub sun, that's a sun symbol, is three point, and let me make sure I'm giving the right number, um, 3.8 times 10 to the 26 joules every second. And so it's literally just the amount of energy per second released across all wavelengths and all, all ways that it's able to emit energy, which is literally through light and nothing else. So joules per second is otherwise known as watts. So what I want to do here is say in, in IN, in one second, how much mass does the sun actually burn? And by the way, we know that um, the conversion rate is something like it's only about two, well, only about 2% efficient or 3% efficient or so. Um, so what that means is only about 2 to 3% of the hydrogen is actually converted to helium. So in other words, if we know the, the raw amount and we know exactly what percent of the total it was, we can work backwards to figure out the total amount of hydrogen it's converting every second, if that makes sense. So in this case here, the energy that has been released equals, and by the way, when we define the luminosity is, and let me start backwards, um, luminosity equals dE over dt, or if we want to view it over a finite time, you can think of it as delta E over delta T. So really in this case here, the total energy that we released, E, equals uh, L delta T. So for one second, this is really complete overkill because you just turn watts into joules, like literally. So that's just 3.8 times 10 to the 6 joules because joules per second times second is just joules. All right, so then let's now use Einstein's equation to figure out what the rest mass of that, uh, or, or, the, or the, the, the amount of mass we would destroy to produce that energy. So we have E equals m naught c squared. Now, by the way, um, the, the, everything inside the sun, because it's literally tens of millions of degrees, is moving at very high speeds. So there is absolutely a, a, a kinetic energy involved here too. But we have E equals m naught c squared, literally just divide that energy by c squared. So you take m naught equals whatever that energy is divided by c squared, 3.8 times 10 to the 26 joules divided by nine times 10 to the 16. Now in this case, the units here are going to be meters squared per second squared. Uh, joules, for, for reference, is energy, which is force times distance. So kilogram meters squared per second squared. And I, I'm just doing that. By the way, this comes from C squared. Um, that's, that's true, 9.0. You can go further than that. Um, so I'm just doing that to confirm that the units do, in fact, come out to be kilograms, which is good. And we get out... Uh, I'm going to just round a little bit, about 4 times 10 to the 22. It's like 4.02 or 4.08, um, but rounding to at least 2 sig, two, 1 sig fig, whatever. Um, so what this is here, kilograms, the amount of mass that the sun destroys every second is 
equal to 400, what's, how do we say that? 40 billion, 40,000 billion billion uh, 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 kilograms. I don't know, it's, it's a whole freaking lot. So the, the sun destroys that much every second. Now, that sounds like a lot, but here's the thing. If the sun kept on burning this much mass forever, how long will it live? And just to give you an idea, um, the sun's mass is two times 10 to the 30. So in this case here, I think we're pretty safe that the sun is going to keep on living for, for some amount of time. Uh, you can keep on just keep on burning this amount of mass for literally billions and billions and billions of years and not actually substantially change your overall mass. Um, so I think it's a, kind of a cool example and a cool application of this because literally inside the sun, we actually do get energy from mass. Uh, now, and I was going to go through kind of the individual particles, the, the, the proton-proton chain. I don't think it's worth going, doing that right now. Um, it's a really cool chain reaction. Um, so I encourage you, because that's exactly what the paper uh, uh, diagram, that's what they won their Nobel for. But this exact calculation, though, comes from Einstein's basic idea that literally we're destroying some mass.